Secure Nalbano with all haste. I will go. And I will go at his side. Final Fantasy has always been about reinvention, and Final Fantasy XII embodies this to such an extreme that you might wonder, even for a second, if this is really a Final Fantasy game. Not only is it deserving of the name, but it's an RPG through and through, where story-driven exploration of spacious locales and monster hunting effectively feed into its stat-based progression within an ensemble cast of colorful personalities. As with every Final Fantasy before it, 12 puts its own spin on how chocobos, summons, and characters named Sid play into its epic journey. With its remaster, The Zodiac Age, Final Fantasy XII puts its best foot forward with a wealth of improvements and changes, delivering a fresh experience even if you know how to go from the Fawn Coast to the Tomb of Wraithwall without a map. For those who've religiously played the PS2 version of Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age is not only a remaster, but also a remix. Keen eyes will notice subtle tweaks to enemy locations and even changes to the selection of merchant goods. Some of these modifications are in service to the Character Enhancing License Board, which itself has been overhauled from the original game in order to give each party member more distinctive abilities. Along with the inclusion of a Japanese voice track and improved loading times, the option to toggle between the original and reorchestrated versions of Hitoshi Sakamoto's exquisite soundtrack is a welcome feature. <laughs> Lastly, the improved high-definition visuals brings out a fetching, painterly look to the characters' faces. The Imperials stole it from us, so it's only fair that we take it back. It's our duty as Dalmascans. Further driving the distinctiveness of Final Fantasy XII is its setting of Ivalice, an established universe with its origins outside of the numbered Final Fantasies. And like other games based in Ivalice, specifically Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy Tactics, XII's plot often feels like a middle chapter of a grander tale yet to be told. I will not place my trust in the sword of a traitor. Yet trust his sword we must, traitor or no. I see no other way. Two kingdoms, Dalmasca and Nabradia are caught in the crossfire of two larger warring empires, Rosaria and Arcadia. Of the countless individuals affected by this period of upheaval, six characters, all of whom come from vastly different backgrounds, form your party, uniting for a common cause to de-escalate this continent-wide conflict. Perpetuating this middle episode vibe are the playable characters themselves, who have been appropriately compared to the cast of Star Wars A New Hope. As examples, Ash is the captured princess, and Bosch is the former general in hiding. Balthier is the self-serving pirate with a price on his head, and his partner Fran has been described as sexy Chewbacca. Their intertwined backstories and resulting encounters allow for chemistry and conflict as the often engaging narrative unfolds. The Zodiac Age punctuates Final Fantasy XII's timelessness with the distinctive Gambit battle system. By stringing together a series of if-then commands for each character, battles unfold with a semi-automated flow where you can vanquish beasts without pressing a button for minutes on end. One would think that this would deprive you of agency and engagement, but the Gambit system in fact creates the opposite result. Since you're still responsible for every character's actions, the thrill of seeing your handiwork unfold and emerging victorious never gets old. It allows for experimentation and risk-taking, but the Gambit system truly shines when you stick to sensible and tried-and-true RPG battle tactics. Remember all those times you died in battle because you ignored a status ailment and thought you can get one last attack in instead? This system removes all manner of impulsiveness and for many, offers a 100 hour glimpse of the RPG combatant one aspires to be, free of impetuous behaviors. You don't get your hands on this mechanic in earnest until three hours in, which is one hour too many. Yet getting on board is a notably improved experience over the original game thanks to the option to double or even quadruple the speed of play. 
This is just one of many new features that makes the Zodiac Age ever more engrossing. In a game that features respawning enemies, every hostile area becomes increasingly inviting when you're motivated by growing your party stats at an accelerated pace. While its enhancements do not translate into a brand new experience for existing fans, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age is nonetheless invigorating. Its epic, lore-abundant story and its time-tested gambit system should appeal to those who missed out on Final Fantasy XII the first time around. And thanks in part to the new audio and speed options, The Zodiac Age is an ideal definitive edition, one that improves the game over its original version across the board.